you're not right in a personal space um, with yourself and with other people, it's going to bleed over into your business. So you really have to be strong as an individual in order to be a strong business owner. Hey, everyone. Uh, Alex here from Scale My Cleaning Business. Um, I have here with me Brianne who is a cleaning business owner. She's been in business since 2018. And she's today going to be sharing her story, uh, also some insights on how she was able to get through the rough times of COVID, as well as be able to continue to expand and really just be able to grow uh, at a really good pace over the last couple of years. So I really appreciate you being on here and being willing to share your story. To start things off, um, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you, um, how you got started, and uh, also where you're located as well. Well, I'm based out of Charlotte, um, North Carolina. And as I was saying, I've grown over to um, 10 cities in three different states, um, currently in North, South Carolina, Florida, and Tennessee. Um, I started in April of 2018. I have a background in corporate finance. I worked for one of the largest mutual fund companies in the world for six years. Um, and I decided in 2017, the end of the year, that I just wanted to start a cleaning business off of a conversation I was having with a property manager at the building I lived lived in. And um, I went for it that next April of 2018. Um, my first year, I was really, really slow. She gave me some work. Some other people I knew, I networked and got some work, but I only made 20000 my first year. But after that, we really took off. Um, I've made six figures every year since my first year. So second, third, and fourth year, I've made six figures. And then I've been able to grow to all these different cities and continue to grow my business. So I've been been very lucky. Just out of curiosity. So, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty rapid for, I mean, not just cleaning businesses, but just for any businesses in general, like just that, that pace of growth there. Do you think that there was anything with your skills or your experience that kind of made it a lot quicker for you to be able to start from scratch with two, I think you said $200 you started with? Yes. On a credit card at um, Restaurant Depot. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll definitely say that um, my background in corporate America and um, having a business degree, that was my major in, in undergrad and college. I've learned more in the field and running my business, I feel like, when it comes to actually having a business than I did in college. But I still think that some of those lessons have helped me. I did innovation work at the end of my time um, at the company I used to work for. And I read this book and it was Lean Startup. So basically, it's just get started. Why waste a year or two of your life planning something? And then you start and you realize at step two, you made a mistake and you need to go all the way back to step one. Instead, just kind of jump out the airplane and build your parachute on the way down. And that's what I've done. And I've also learned to pivot very quickly. Like if something isn't working for me, I think about it. I think about potential solutions. I talk to people about it and then I try it. And then if that doesn't work, then we try something else. Um, and I think it's important to recognize that very quickly and also make a change very quickly, um, which is harder for larger companies, but I feel like easier for smaller businesses or smaller companies to do. Yeah. Being able to adapt and just being able to make decisions quickly. Would you say you trust your gut a lot? Like just how you feel about you know, if it's a difficult situation or you have to talk to people, but is that something that helps just over time? Yes. You learn to get more confident in trusting your gut instinct in your own opinion. Um, so I might consult with others, but if I don't agree, I don't agree. Um, but sometimes it helps you view things from a different um, mindset. But I've learned when I haven't gone with my gut or my intuition, um, it usually bites me. So I've learned to grow that confidence and trust myself. Like, you know what? You have experience to lean on now. You've been doing this four and a half years. Trust yourself. Go with your gut instinct. Because every time I don't, I end up getting burned. Yeah, when it's, it's so easy when you're starting a business or even just starting to you know, run it and, and build it. Uh, it's so easy to just get stuck in those, those modes of, you know, what do I do? Or um, especially if it's like a bigger decision about maybe, I don't know, maybe you want to not target and go after churches if you're a commercial cleaner or maybe you just want to let go one of the biggest ones i've seen is uh like letting go of like residential clients because they have that emotional attachment to them but you know we're in times where the minimum wage is pretty high you know in terms of you know just how it's increased and stuff yeah some some accounts uh, i've seen sometimes they don't even make money or they make very 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 little 
on these accounts, but they stick with them though, because it's so easy to get attached when you've worked with someone for so long sometimes. Yeah. And most of my clients are um, short-term rental clients. So like Airbnb, vacation rentals, corporate homes. Um, And we grow with those clients a lot. Um, It's kind of a new arena for cleaners and for hosts. So we go through a lot together. So we kind of have that bond and sometimes it's time to part ways. Um, Because like you said, it's no longer profitable for us as a business um, and we work really hard and they're very dependent on us. So I've kind of had to learn what relationships work for me with clients and not all money is good money. One one of the things that you were talking about before this was you said, you know, you you obviously started at 2018. Uh, What happened when everything started to go crazy in the world and uh, how how were you able to make those decisions and up to that. So I'll say that not many people know this because I'm very independent and like to, you know, always have a strong face, but I saw it coming um, before it happened in 2020. Actually, I I saw when the world was shutting down before it kind of came to the U S and before we shut down in March and beginning of March, I went through a bad business deal with trying to build a mobile app. Um, And literally that same week that that was going wrong, the world started to shut down. America started to shut down. And I sat in my car and I cried for a whole day. I cried on the phone with one of my major clients. She wanted to quit um, because she felt she wouldn't be able to pay her rent um, because people were not traveling. The world stopped. And that was how we got our money. That's the business that we depended on. So I kind of told her, don't don't quit. You know, we we talked each other out of it. A couple of friends talked some confidence into me. Hey, you'll get through this. Um, we went from making like 40,000 a month doing sometimes on Sunday, our busiest day, 40 to 60 turnover cleans um, to some days, nothing at all. And only 3000 I made the month of March. I didn't bounce back till that summer. Um, but even then it was kind of like 10, 12,000. Um, so it was nothing like before. Um, so thank God I had some good financial planning and things in place um, when that happened and it held me over until I got some help from some grants and stuff. And then business slowly began to um, to pick up. But that was definitely a really scary time. Um, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was definitely worried. I was like, I got about one more month in me and then I don't know what I'm going to do. And thank God, you know, things came through for me. So we were able to make it. And a, a lot of people in our industry didn't make it. Uh, what do you think is the biggest reason why they didn't make it? If you had to say maybe one or two things. Probably poor financial planning. Um, and these are companies that had multi-millions in backing, um, like the short-term rental companies that I'm aware of. They walked away from apartments in major cities and states with all the furniture left behind. Um, so even though they had that financial backing, they clearly were not smart with their money. They clearly didn't save because they were not able to continue to operate without people renting those apartments. They weren't able to pay their rent. Um, So I think that's a major part of it. And I also think too, like relationships, because, you know, one of my clients was able to go to the buildings and talk to them and work out, you know, a situation where maybe she wasn't paying, but they knew she was going to pay and they trusted her and they let her stay in the building instead of kicking her out. So I think, you know, relationships also saved um, a lot of us during COVID because we kind of leaned, you know, on each other to get through those times when she wasn't able to pay or other clients weren't able to pay because they weren't making money. I found ways to, you know, get funding through like fun box and stuff like that to hold me over so I could give them more time to pay. So, you know, relationships definitely helped us all get through as well. That's awesome. Yeah. One of the things I was surprised that you didn't say this when I asked the question about your previous experience, but uh, in case for anyone who doesn't know fun box, I've actually recently found out about it, but I don't know if you want to explain it, but it, it seems to kind of match you with different funding opportunities when time, especially when times can be tough or even better is when times are not tough and you can do things to prepare, which is when I think most people like least prepare. Crazy thing. Even Funbox cut my amount I could take from them when COVID happened because they were like scared that they were not going to make it as a business. That was kind of their explanation to me why they they cut it like immediately from a couple thousand to like eight hundred dollars. And I'm like, I need this. Like, why are you guys? Well, we can't. We don't know if we'll get it back. Things are tough right now. We don't have the capital to give everybody as much right now. So that was also, you know, everybody felt it back in, in 2020. But um, Funbox is a company that 
like Alex said, it matches you with funding. Um, so what I did was I connected my QuickBooks and it would see that I had invoices pending. It's called factoring. So they would see I have those invoices pending and they would front me the money and I would pay them back on a schedule, of course, with a slight fee. But it was nothing like, um, you know, too intrusive. Um, I know I don't know if you guys have heard of merchant cash advances, but those are horrible things to get into. They cost way too much and they hurt your cash flow. Um, so Fundbox is a much better option if you're needing some funding in advance while waiting on those invoices um, to kind of help you float over to handle things like payroll, because that was the main thing that I needed to be able to take care of. Yeah. And that's that's a huge problem in the industry is like, you know, having. Uh, either, you know, like working a full time job, you know, trying to build this on the side, using your personal money to fund your business, you know, your business and invest into that. Do you feel like there was anything in particular that you invested into that really allowed your business to grow to the level that it's at today and, and being able to continue to grow? Early on, I was like, I cannot do this if I don't automate. I cannot. There's no way I can scale, keep up with my clients because my clients were like, hey, we want to grow and we want to grow fast because this is this is hot, you know, with Airbnbs and short term rentals. And if you know what you're doing, you can really scale that business even quicker than I've scaled my cleaning business. I um, found this software called VR Scheduler and it allowed me to sync their calendars and create tasks and you know, send uh, jobs to cleaners and they could accept or decline because that's kind of how I wanted to be like Uber kind of um, when I first started. So that allowed me to really automate my business um, from a scheduling standpoint, from an invoicing standpoint and paying my cleaners. So everything is through this software and I don't have to manually do um, everything because if I did, there's no way I would have enough time in a day to help clean, manage cleaners, manage clients and continue to grow my business. There's so many tools out there. It's crazy. Just there are. for pretty much everything. It blows my mind. Uh, people that don't use a calendar, like an online calendar for their life who own a business. I'm, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I know how they do it, did it because I used to do it. And then I just realized it was just nonsense. And then yeah. calendar is, is huge. Um, anyone who's listening to this, there's like another one that I've been trying out called, uh, it's called Motion, like M-O-T-I-O-N. I think it's called App Motion or App.Motion, something like that. It sounded similar to kind of what you were describing. Like you can add these tasks and then it'll automatically reschedule things in your own calendar. And I think you can share it with your team. Yeah, it's just something I've been trying out. I don't know if you want to ever check it out, but it's um I think I'm yeah, I think I'm going to use it like a lot more. I'm I'm actually um I've been working um with a CEO um out of New York City, Cleanetto Miguel. He's awesome. Um he's been in the cleaning business for over 15 years. Um and I've been paying to use his app and website since November and I just haven't finished launching it. Um, but for my commercial and my residential business, I'm going to use it. His app is really cool. It's just like Uber. Like it shows you on a map, like where you're going. Um, so the client can see the client can directly communicate and message the cleaner, rate them, tip them. It just seems super cool. Um, my only thing is I want him to get it to also work with my Airbnb business. So I don't have to use two different um, apps. And I've kind of always wanted to create my own too, um, just because I, I know what solutions I need and I can't find the like perfect one for everything. But I'll say those two right now are the best that I've found so far. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, kind of going back to with, you know, the COVID and everything and going off of that uh, from there uh, is pretty impressive. All the different areas and cities that you're expanding to. How how did you start expanding? Like, how did you start going through that and, you know, finding workers and going through that process? And how did you, yeah, how have you been able to do that? Definitely a lot of trial and error when it comes to, to hiring. Um, and what I found is that in different cities, I would more like to wear the hat of kind of like a contractor and subcontracting out the work um, just because I'd rather work with other entrepreneurs that have that mindset that I know are going to show up because I'm not personally there. So if someone calls out or isn't reliable, then what am I going to do? Um, it's stressful to try to scramble and find someone at the last minute. And that's what I went through. Um, the first city I expanded to was Raleigh, North Carolina. A current client here in Charlotte asked me if I would expand to Raleigh. I went to college in Raleigh. I lived there for 10 years on and off. So I had a lot of connections. I knew the area. I was like, sure. And it's only two and a half hours away from Charlotte. So 
I said, yes. So in November of 2020, expanded to downtown Raleigh with them. Um, and it wasn't until this year um, that I really started expanding to different cities because I found that working with other entrepreneurs, other cleaning business owners, it really worked out well for me. If they have their own team, that's great. Or if they just work by themselves, that's great too. I can pay them as a business owner. I know how taxes and stuff work. So I'm able to kind of have that conversation as well. Um, so that's how I've been able to grow this year. I went from just being in Charlotte and Raleigh to adding Chapel Hill because it's close to Raleigh, adding Cary because it's it's close to Raleigh. Um, then going down into South Carolina, I just launched, launched in Charleston, South Carolina last week. Um, I hired two ladies down there that are really awesome. Um, I'm expanding with that same client to Greenville, South Carolina. I'm in Rock Hill, Fort Mill, South Carolina. Um, I had a lot of interest in Miami, Florida, actually. And I was scared because it was so far away. But this lady went on my website and booked last Friday. So I went, I found someone. She was amazing. Thank God she has a team of 15. She went and did the job on Saturday. Lady was actually from Charlotte. So she'll be back here. I'll get to meet her. That's pretty cool. Um, and she loved the service. So she was like, I'll definitely go with you guys when I launch my Airbnb. So now I'll grow in Miami. Same thing. I have a client here that's in Nashville. She needs a backup cleaner. And I kind of want to get in Nashville as a hot market for Airbnb. So we'll be growing there um, next. And who knows where else, you know, if someone says they need our service, then I go look for someone. Or if I know someone in the city, I reach out to them and then I make it happen. Like with those relationships that you have with those cleaning companies that you partner with and you work out maybe a certain percentage or something like that. Do you find that once you do a job or two and like, let's say, for example, Miami, is that kind of a, a domino effect where they refer other people like from that and you just keep kind of growing with that? Or how does that, how is it, how have you been able to expand from that initial partnership? I don't know if that that question makes yeah, sense. It it does. How do I continue to grow in, in those areas? Well, once I'm in those areas, if people have reached out to me previously in that area, I'll reach back out to them. Hey, how's your cleaning provider working out for you? Did you find someone? Um, and then I'm in all these Facebook groups and I'll see people post that they need cleaners in a city and I'll put the name of my company simply. And a lot of times I get clients just by doing that. Um, but yes, I had my good friend's aunt is helping me out in Raleigh. She's absolutely amazing. Um, and she brought someone on that she knows from her neighborhood and she's oh. amazing. So she just called me this morning, like I'm doing a painting job for someone in Chapel Hill. Can you send her a quote today for a deep clean? And then can you quote her on how much it would cost for her to set up to do this as an Airbnb instead of a long-term renter? And then what would you charge her on going? So I'll send that over today and maybe that's a new client. So I've been finding different ways to just grow organically. Again, building relationships with people, treating people People good, um, being trustworthy and reliable, it really goes a long way because it's it's free marketing. I don't pay for any marketing. I never have paid to market my business. So everything has just been me going on Facebook and interacting with people, building my brand and, and building relationships out in these different cities. If we're working with someone that can not only provide an amazing service, but knows how to work like the referral thing, like basically just providing a good service backed by a good relationship and really just showing that they care about their clients. Like they've been able to grow on the marketing end as well as the other end, which the only downside is that it's not always predictable, but it's like, if you're continuously building those relationships, it's only the only way for it to go is up, you know, from there, it's like, it's almost like a spider web. You know, if you have like, even if you just have three accounts, like, having those relationships is even more important because you're relying on three rather than three or 30 or 300. And, but that that's eventually going to get you access to all these other people. It sounds like you do a lot of Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, uh, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that especially in like the real estate and property management, you've gotten a lot of referrals maybe. Yeah. With so actually I had a, my first Airbnb client in Charlotte. He decided to go long-term um, and just start buying properties and investing and doing it that way. So he has a property manager um, here in Charlotte that takes care of his property for him. He referred me to him. Hey, this is my cleaner. She's great. I want you to use her. I was initially just doing stuff for that client, but then the owner of the property management company was like, you guys are great. Can you clean all properties? I currently have almost 70 and counting. In Charlotte, South Carolina, we just did one in Salisbury two days ago for him, North Carolina, which is like an hour away from Charlotte. Um, 
So now we do everything for him. He calls me at least once a week to do a move out, move in um, type of cleaning. Um, and I've even been in his ear about doing Airbnb. So maybe he'll try that soon as well. But, you know, I, again, building relationships, being solid, you know, with your clients, they'll refer you to any business that they they can. And I, I don't always do things thinking about money. Um, I more so think about the relationship doing something for someone I know eventually down the line and it'll pay off. And it, it always does. And not only treating your clients well, but treating the people that work with you well, the cleaners, the cleaning companies. Um, I pay them more than most people probably pay. And I make, you know, less, especially if I'm hiring another company to do a job. Um, I, I normally pay them more than I would pay in a direct employee working for me um, just because I, I understand the hustle. So I make less, but as I continue to grow, that'll quantify for me and it's less headache and they're more reliable and they do a great job. So it's helping them out. They're helping me out. Um, again, I'm not getting rich off of just one clean or a couple of cleans, but I'm thinking about long-term that'll start to add up as I continue to grow. Uh, there's like this picture in your head of when you start a business where you think it's just going to be like this gradual like thing. But it's more of like it's more of like this, and then you know, like little humps in between. Yeah, course. and then you hope that you just stop going so far down on the humps, <laughs> like level it off a little bit. Stop going so far down because you learn yeah. and you, you know, you're learning and getting better, and uh, yeah, you just it's just, it's a process. You know, there's different involved in being a business owner and not just being a business owner, but being a good one. Um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, that was really insightful on how you were able to grow. So it's, uh, where do you think, by the way, like, where do you think you got that from? Like, where that importance of relationships and how you treat people? Like, where do you, did you, were there certain books that you read or were you brought up in that mindset? Where... I was, I was brought up in that mindset. I get a lot of things from my mom. She's a very hard worker, um, believes in doing everything on her own and doing everything the right way and treating people good, helping people out. And, you know, sometimes people are like, you're too nice. You get taken advantage of. And I don't hold on to when those types of things happen because usually something comes along to replace um, whatever I lost or whatever happened to me. And it's 10 times better. Um, so I just also try to keep that mindset when things go wrong, they went wrong. So things can go right. That's what I told someone the other day. Um, so just not getting caught up in problems or when things don't work out. Cause I'm like, it's a reason there's something better focus on the better focus on the solution. Um, and yes, books, reading books help, um, being spiritual. You know, my company name is uh, live clean and it's not only after my daughter, Olivia live. Um, but it also kind of represents like who I am, like living clean, eating clean, you know, green products and just thinking about other people living a clean lifestyle. So I really think the name was perfect. At first it, it came from just my daughter. Um, I was trying to think of a name for a cleaning company and I was telling her to stop. I was like, live, stop. And I was like, live clean. <laughs> so it's crazy just how that, how that worked out. Um, and I do read a lot of books. I read a lot of more of like the spiritual self-help, like four agreements, as a man thinketh, those kind of books to help with your mental. Because if you're not right in a personal space um, with yourself and with other people, it's going to bleed over into your business. So you really have to be strong as an individual in order to be a strong business owner. More money, more problems, as they say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say is your favorite book like that? That's really changed who you are and has helped you. So a lot of people have not heard of this book, probably. Um, it's kind of like a higher level self book. Um, and I didn't understand it when I first read it. I was 27 the first time I read it. Um, and it's the Kibalon. Um, It's the laws of Hermes Trismegistus, like polar, you know, polar things like love is on the same polarity as, as hate and as above below and just kind of teaching you about yourself as a person and how the world works. And, you know, things are very mental. Um, if you're able to control your mental state and how you view things and makes a big difference on how everything around you works. I would love to talk to you about ideas separately like after after this about that because that's something i'm trying to incorporate with like the kind of like the mindset stuff because that stuff is so so important and everything you do in your personal life is going to translate into your business life and vice versa yeah so so important and it's often overlooked i overlooked it for like seven years or eight years so 
Yeah. Uh, no, I want I wanted to be a business owner since I can remember when my manager at my corporate job asked me, what do you want to do in five years? I said, own a juice company because I thought I wanted to do like juices because I remember that year it grew like 28 percent. And I love um, drinking fresh um, made juices. So I was like, I'm going to have a juice bar. Clearly, I don't have a juice bar, but I always knew I wanted to run a business. But I don't think that I was ever ready until I was ready. And even when I started, I probably wasn't ready. I just kind of jumped into it. But, um, you know, I feel that I've gotten much better. Um, and the quicker I continue to improve as a person, the quicker my business takes off. This year is really, and I, I've really seen that this year has been my main focus. And like I said, I grew from two cities to 10 um, and we're only halfway through the year. So I'm super excited. My goal is to get international Cross your fingers. So I'm excited. Oh, where, where would be the first country that you would go to internationally? Oh, there's three that are on my mind, but there's one that I've actually toured. I toured it in 2020, toured land and stuff, talked to a real estate agent. And that's Tulum, Mexico. Um, I like <laughs> Tulum. They're building the Mayan Express, a fast speed train from Cancun. So you don't have to drive a car or pay someone to come pick you up because it's like a two and a half hour drive. The train will go to the ruins. It'll go deeper down the peninsula to Bacala. Like it's it's great and it's growing. They built a second road to the beach in Tulum. When I went, there was only one road to the beach. Now there's two um, main roads to the beach. So there, um, Panama City, because it's a major port um, in Costa Rica. I've heard great things about Costa Rica. So those are three places that are kind of on my list first. But I would like to do several, as you can tell. It's a big interest of mine. I love to travel. Yeah, interesting. Well, when you get to Tulum uh, or when you're expanding to Tulum, let me know because I lived there for six months and I know plenty <laughs> Well, there that's kind that's of funny. awesome <laughs> uh, so now just visiting the states and I'll, I'll be back um but yeah you're right yeah it's it's insane like they're building this huge uh train system to go through like the whole yucatan yeah and um yeah it's 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 growing like crazy the real estate in tulum is crazy too like with all the resorts and everything so, I so guess they, were, makes- they were building the a loft when i visited in um august of 2020 oh wow yeah. So I know that it's grown so much since I've been there. I spent a week there. I got certified in scuba diving while I was there in Akuma. Oh, no. Yeah. It was Note diving? Yes, I did. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And the Mayan yeah. cleanse. Yep. Yeah. That's I love awesome. it there. It's it's great vibes. I love it. Uh, with the resorts, with the Airbnbs. Um, like I had a friend who's doing Airbnbs and yeah, he was doing really well with it. Like it was down in Tulum, always being rented, like so every this is what I tell everyone, you know, every area is different and why you have to test things. You got to see what works for you and, you know, what's in demand, kind of just meshing those two things mm-hmm. and see what works. Just wanted to thank you for uh, coming on here. Um, we'll definitely schedule some time. I, I do have a call right after this, but right after that, I would love to get on the phone with you and talk more about some things. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was really insightful. Like your journey, your story, I think is fascinating. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add that you think could help maybe some of the viewers, anyone who's starting a cleaning business or running one, but maybe feels a little bit stuck? Yeah, I would say that um, if you're feeling stuck or feeling um, demotivated, that um, you have to focus on the fact that you can do this. You can um, wear a luxury cleaning service. It's a luxury service that we're providing. People need the service no matter what area um, you clean in, be it commercial, residential, Airbnb, you want to focus on restaurants, whatever that may be, focus on the type of cleaning that you enjoy. I enjoy traveling. I enjoy Airbnb. So that's what I focus on. Um, so focus on that area of cleaning, have a passion for it. It'll it'll show and really give it your all and, and, and don't quit. Don't let anything stop you. If things aren't working out, think about how you can do something different um, because you can do it. There's been many times where I've felt I couldn't do it. Um, This year was one of them. I started off pretty rough, ended pretty rough, but things are going great now because I changed my attitude and my mindset. And I was like, I can figure this out. I can do it. And then things just really took off. So even when you think things aren't going well, just keep, keep pushing. Don't give up. Uh, Well, thank you again for coming on here. Your story has been great. I think there's so many really helpful things that you've said and really impactful things. So thank you for sharing those things. I hope everyone watching this starts taking action on those. And um, yeah, I'll post that link to, uh, what was it, that app? VR VR scheduler. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, our scheduler um, and anything else that's helpful, we'll put it in the description down below. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, Brianne, for, for coming on here. Thank <music> you.